So I'll touch on a few of our, our most common um, exemptions. Actually, this, this list is, is all of our exemptions right here. The normal farming exemption, maintenance exemption, construction ma or maintenance of farm and stock ponds. That's also known as our irrigation exemption. Construction of temporary sediment basins on a construction site. Activities authorized by Section 208B4 of the Clean Water Act. Or construction or maintenance of farm roads, forest roads, or mining roads. Temporary mining roads, that is. Those are all, all the Section 404F exemptions that the Corps has under the Clean Water Act. Permits are not required for these actions as long as you meet the exemption. And part of meeting that exemption is, is what's referred to as the recapture provision. A permit is required um, if it's part of an activity whose purpose is to convert an area of waters of the U.S. into a use to which it was not previously subject. This would mean where the flow or circulation of waters have been impaired or the reach is reduced. And that's a two-part test there. So if the flow and circulation is impaired and the reach is reduced, um, you've triggered both parts of the recapture provision, the permit would be met. So, you know, there it is possible to maybe alter the flow, say with a uh, diversion structure. Theoretically, you shouldn't be reducing the reach of those waters. Therefore, the recapture provision wouldn't have been met yet. And I'll go a little bit more into that. I'm here in a couple of slides when we get into the irrigation exemption. But the recapture provision is, is kind of one way that you can get booted out of, a, of an exemption. Again, that's if you're altering the flow and circulation of waters of the U.S., as well as reducing the reach of those waters. So our maintenance exemption, um, we've got a photo of apples and oranges here. The maintenance exemption really is the replacement of a currently serviceable structure. And that replacement needs to be like for like or apples for apples. It cannot be apples for oranges. For example, if you need to replace a 10 inch pipe, it needs to be replaced with a 10 inch pipe of similar character, scope and size. You cannot go back and replace it with a bigger structure, you know, that's outside of the original fill design. It's got to be the same exact fill design. So some items that often qualify for maintenance exemptions are dikes, dams, levees, groins, riprap, breakwaters, causeways, bridge abutments, or approaches and transportation structures. Uh, particularly after an emergency occurs, this maintenance exemption allows for emergency reconstruction of things like dams, um, causeways, levees, riprap, bridge abutments, all that assuming you're going to put it back, you know, how it was before. Apples for apples. It cannot be, you know, it cannot go outside of the original fill design. So there's some gray area in the maintenance exemption, but the one area that is black and white is the apples for apples clause or the like for like. You know, it's got to be, it's got to be replaced in kind within the original fill design. Where we get a little bit outside of that can be the irrigation exemption. This exemption is for the construction or maintenance of farm and stock ponds and irrigation ditches or the maintenance of drainage ditches. Also included in this exemption um, are discharges associated with siphons, pumps, head gates, swing walls, weirs, diversion structures, and other facilities as are pertinent and functionally related to the irrigation ditch. Those are all included in the exemption. Common feature, that photo on the left, you know, a diversion structure, uh, water's diverted to the ditch there, kind of uh, in the foreground. Um, but in the background, the river is still able to flow through. You know, it's not totally choking off the river. Um, there's still, it's not reducing the reach. That river is still able to flow to its ultimate destination. Our exemptions are all reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis, so if, it's always helpful to reach out, even if you're, if you know, even if you're fairly certain. Because even if you are fairly certain, if you let us know, and and we know you're going to be in there creating a diversion structure or replacing a head gate, something like that, um, and we get a call from, say, a, a nosy neighbor or something like that, we'll know that that's going on, you know, and it won't raise any immediate red flags. We'll we'll kind of know, hey, he's he's in there working in the river, he's exempt, you know, it's for his irrigation ditch. As far as these ditches go, you know, what constitutes an irrigation ditch versus, say, a municipal or industrial MI water supply. Um, as a general rule of thumb, greater than 50% of the water conveyed in the ditch should be used for agricultural purposes, an ultimate um, agricultural purpose. You now, if it's a split party ditch where half the water's for MI and half is for agriculture, and it's the MI component wanting to do the work, they're not going to qualify for the exemption. They're going to need a permit for that. The purpose for the work is solely related for agricultural purposes. Then it's going to meet the exemption. But it's got to have that kind of, you know, at least 50% need or 50% use heading towards agricultural purposes.
So the general definition, construction or maintenance of farm and stock ponds, maintenance um, can mean the removal of accumulated debris and sediment from a pond or ditch. Um, this allows you to dredge or clean um, a pond or ditch that is kind of sedimented in or filled in with debris or, or any other sediment. It's kind of a tricky spot, but, but where we draw that line between what's considered a pond and say a, a reservoir is somewhere between 15 to 20 surface acres. And this is kind of also dependent on the size of the farm or ranch using um, using the water. This is to kind of help us prevent a situation where, you know, at, at one point someone constructs a 25 surface acre pond or, or you know, we technically call it a reservoir at that point, but someone constructs a 25 surface acre reservoir, you know, and it's all exempt, no permit required or anything like that. And then the property sells. And, and now that pond is the focal point of a residential subdivision. That residential subdivision is now going to require an individual permit, um, which is a more substantial time consuming permitting mechanism as, a, as opposed to an exemption or a, a general permit. So this is to kind of try to avoid that. Um, there's been some precedent set that 15 to 20 surface acres is kind of the cutoff between a pond and a reservoir. Pond maintenance is covered by the irrigation exemption. Reservoir maintenance, possibly not, but again, case by case basis, reach out to your project manager. Reservoir maintenance um, will likely be covered by a nationwide permit three, which I will touch on uh, a little bit later.